song said, let the river flow. Let the river flow. What does it say? He said, let that Holy let Spirit flow. come out. Yes, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit come out. Let the 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 let the river. Let the poor man say, I am rich in you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Let the poor man say, I am rich in him. Let the lost man say, I am found in him. And then he said, let the dead man say that I am born again. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the Holy Spirit come out. Let yes. the words of God yes. come out. Be filled with power. Be filled with power. If you got God in you, then you got power in you. Amen. All power, Jesus said, has been yes. given to me in hell, in heaven, and in earth. So you go. Yes. So you see, when you invited the Lord into you, yes, Lord. He came into you. Yes, Amen. And Him being in you gives you power. Yes. That same power that He has is in you. Yes, Lord. The Word says, "Greater is He that is in me." Than he that is in the world. Yes. So there you go. Yes. Lord. There you go. Let the spirit flow. Hallelujah. Let the spirit flow. Don't hold back. Don't be ashamed. Just, just step out there. We need to get the word out. The word needs to get out because there's a lot of hurting people out there today who are seeking what you got. And why would you deprive them of what you have? Amen. Freely you have received, so freely give. Amen. Don't hold it. Give. This is our Sunday before Thanksgiving, and I thought I'd ask, since we have the Holy Spirit, since we are thankful for everything that we've received this year would there is there anyone who would like to share what they want to happen this thanksgiving or that has happened up until this point something that you are thankful for separated for a very long time. I hadn't seen her since I was 10 years old. And I was quite up in age when we got back together. I was appointed by the other siblings who had other jobs. And they said, well, you have more free time than we do. 
so is your task. And it, of course, the scripture would say was to look after our parents. Amen. We're to take care of them. We're to see that they're happy. Amen. See that they have what they'd like. And if disabled, then that's what we do. So I sacrificed that seven years of my life. I wasn't able to have a job. I wasn't able to really uh, have a life other than her. And so she that said, well, you know, I don't want my children to have to have taken care of me. And I said, well, you know, there's a lot of bad things that happen when somebody else can take care of you. Amen. Yeah. And I have not always been such a good Christian, so I don't want to have to go back to that if they hurt you. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'll sacrifice and I'll do that. Well, she passed in August, and um, I, I didn't have really a direction. Um, another pastor, a friend of ours, Pastor Royce Williams, he reached out, he and his wife, Sister Grace. Grace and they said, come to Arizona. And so I came to Golden Valley. Well, once I got into the area, then I wanted to look up Pastor Jones and Sister Ruth. And I only knew of the old church back down in Mojave Valley. But then, of course, we have the internet. So I started searching. I found out that they were here. And then sent the message that I'm close by. And I'd like to see how you are. Uh, and so the Lord always has a way of just making things happen, as you say. You trust in him. You just let go. Let God. And he'll do it. So... Sister Ruth sent me a text message letting me know what time the service started. I had no idea how long it would take to get here. Not wanting to rush, break the speed laws, <laughs> just letting it flow. And so as it turned out, I pulled into the parking lot exactly at 1045. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a minute too Thank you, so a minute too late. It was just right on time. And so it always confirms that when you just release yourself, yes. no matter what your circumstance Come has on. been, once you decide to give yourself to him, yes. once you let him be the driver and you just yes. be the rider, he'll get you where you need to be in yes. life. That's right. for her. It was for me too, you know. It's fine. Um, I just want to thank God for my children, all seven of them, and my eight grandchildren. And I'm praying and my hope is that they all come together yes. this year, you know, without me being here, you know, without me being the, the leader. Let them learn yes. how to come together. Yes. I, I raised them up in church, but I wasn't always holy, you know. But I want to get closer to God. I want to be more thankful for the little things that he does for me. Because yes. he's been so good to yes. me. And I, and then my friend that taught me how to read, she's here in Vegas. Praise and I haven't seen her in 38 years. She taught me how to read. We went to church together in California in Carson City, and I haven't seen her. She's came back to Vegas again. And, my hope is that I can go see her. They got to make a way where I can go see her for the first time in 37 years. And I just give it my thanks and praise to God. Thank praise God for finding Pastor Ruth. And Ooh, I pass by yeah. here, saying it every day. Every time I got a chance, pass by here. And I kept saying, I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I know I'm coming in. And they praise God. And I'm here. And I give glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. We give glory to God. we don't say thanks enough and it's real you just never know and it's important to let people know how much you love them and care for them and their needs you know and um and also it was really funny that i was sitting in uh helping my friend at the cancer center the other day and and she, we said something and, and daryl quoted a scripture a scripture you know 
all the time I think he's half asleep. He's sick to oh. But the idea is that he, he's actually there. quoted the scripture. Um, he's not feeling well today. But um, I was like shocked. And I thought, like, it's actually coming into my head. God. Wow. It's wonderful. Hey. Yeah. 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 We have our family so far away and all the people we have. All we have to do is think of them. And, and, and think of them, they're always in our hearts and they're always there for us, even the people that passed on. Yes. We just have to have, a, the memories can't be taken away from us. Mm -hmm. They're there for us to, yes. to help us through things. And as we get into the holidays, we gotta remember the reason for the season. Yes. But be thankful, because I always seem to be thankful every day of your, letting every day you breathe your air, everything you yes. see and every little bird in the trees and all the, and the breeze and the, and the beauty of, the, of what the world is really all about, what it made, you know? Yes. And I can go on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I better. <laughs> okay, anybody else want to talk? Yes, I can see Junior. Okay. Um, I do not cease to give thanks for your remembrance you in prayer, Ephesians 1.16. Whenever I count my blessings, I always want to thank the Lord for Bethel Community Church and the body of Christ. I just want to thank everyone for loving me. Oh, glory to God. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have a little sister. She has cancer. Had cancer. Yes, had had in hands. Jesus' name. But Jesus' name. She's right now recovering from cancer. You know, it's only been a year since we found out that she has cancer. Well, it's actually been two years. Because I was with her for one year. Yeah. Back in Colorado. And we I stayed with her. All during her chemo, everything that she went through, I went through it. Amen. I went through it myself. Yes, Lord. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. You know it's yes. uh, hard to stand up here and you, talk about it. Thank you, Jesus. I really haven't talked about it since. Yes, Lord. In that. It's, uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's uh, kind of, kind of, really hard to say anything. But. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it was Thank you, a blessing that she went through because all you people. All the people here prayed for her, prayed for us, really, because she went through a lot. But right now she is, you couldn't even tell. Amen. Hallelujah. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, but that's about the only way you can really tell is she's had cancer or anything wrong with her, you know. But I just want to thank everybody here, everybody, for praying and giving her up to God. Mm -hmm. And because God is the one that heals her. Yes. And through your prayers, yes. he heard us. Yes. He yes. heard her. So thank you. Praise In Jesus' God. name. Thank you. Thank you. Glory Thank Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I want to thank God for all the blessings that he has, has given me. Uh, I had gout. I had a, a really long battle with it. And, and the doctor tells me now that uh, it's almost gone. I still have it and have to take medication. But I had, well, my friends who are my roommates also, and my family, I had all their support, and I am, am so thankful that, 
that I, I can get about. And, um, and with my um, daughters and son-in-laws, and they were, were behind me. But uh, especially my roommates, they were there during the six weeks that I could barely get out of bed and walk. And they were there, especially Penny. She did everything for me. So I am so grateful and pleased, and I praise and thank God every day of all the support and the fact that I can walk other places without my walker. Yes. Hi, my name is Juliana. Um, I told my mom I didn't want to come up here, but she said just go up there and thank God for everything. And thank your mom for everything. And I do thank my mom a lot for everything because if it wasn't for her, and of course my dad, I wouldn't be here. And if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. Amen. And I just thank my mom and my dad for everything. And I thank God, first of all, I thank God for everything. I thank him that I'm still alive and I just love, I love all of you guys and all my family and my mom and my dad and all my friends who actually love me and care about me and not just, you know, use me for stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very happy and grateful that I'm still alive right now. everyone that attends here, Pastor um, Bill and, and Sister Ruth, uh, for loving us. Um, I'm way more grateful, you know, uh, coming here. And um, um, I, I just want to say, God wants your heart. He, he truly wants your heart. Yes. And, um, Jesus died on the cross to identify whether he he on a level all, all of us. Yes. He truly wants your heart. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to um, thank God for, I got a new job, and um, I was worried um, because I travel a lot, and this way I'm being close to town, I live in Bullhead, so I got a job in Laughlin, so it's been really good, and this, this past week was my first week of um, orientation, and I've been traveling back and forth to Vegas again, but, you know, I was a little concerned that I, every, twice a year I do foot washing, and that's a, um, a mission of mine that I got to do that you guys are aware of, and it's coming up on the 22nd. Well, I just got this new job, right? So I was like, oh God, they're not going to let me be off of this. <laughs> so I talked to the supervisor, and I said, look, you know, I volunteer and work with the homeless, and she goes, you know, you're still on orientation. I guess we can give you the day off. And I'm like, thank God. So they gave me the day, but this was my first week. So I was like, I'm already asking. I was like, that's a lot to ask for in the first week. <laughs> so anyway, so God bless me so that I can do the foot washing uh, the day before Thanksgiving. So I spend my Thanksgiving with the homeless and they feed like about 4,000 people. So it was a really good event. And I'm just asking you guys to pray because for me, for strength, because I... I uh, talk to the people about the Lord while I'm doing their feed, and um, people want prayer for different issues. People are talking about suicide, they talk about mental issues while I'm doing their feed. So it's my way of ministering to them. Yes, um, I tell them about things, I ask them, do you want prayer? They, they open up to me. So I'm just asking for the strength for everybody to pray for me. Thank you. Hi, 
I'm Sarah. Um, first off, I just want to thank God for all of us still being here, and it is just a big thank you and just it's praise that we're all still living and I would love to thank my mom and dad for me still being here and them trying for me and right now we're all kind of in a struggle because we all miss my dad yes 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 thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Jesus sure. he gets better by the day yes Lord and then really miss him and I'm just praying to God that he gets better yes, Lord. and he can come home soon yes, Lord. Yes. and I thank God for my family still sticking around after yes. everything everyone's been through yes. we've been through a lot yes. and I'm pretty sure everyone has everybody has those rough stages in life but you guys just keep pushing through mm -hmm. and you will get through it and just remember, you're never alone. You've got God, and you've yes. got your family, you've got your friends, you've got everyone that loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Without him, I wouldn't be here. Without him, you wouldn't be here. That's true. So let's just give him all the praise oh, and all the glory and the Lord. thanks for all things. And and we should not let today or this Thanksgiving be the only time that we confront God with our praise and our thanks. Amen. We should thank him every day because yeah. every day he's doing what he does every day yeah. and that yeah. is sustain us provide for us and to keep yes. us yes. so just thank god this is this is a great time of year thank you. yes Lord. when we can stop and look at each other stop mm -hmm. and, and think about what we want to give each other stop and, and just think what we've all received yes. and Amen. then the idea of coming together on turkey day and stuffing ourselves with the people that we love <laughs> So, just again, thank God for you guys. Thank God for this place and so forth. Thank God that I love you all. And I thank God that you all love me. Well, those of you who don't love me, you, you will too. <laughs> I'll grow on you. And besides that, you have to love me to get into the kingdom. So I know I got to come. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And, and again, thank you guys for being here. Yes, Lord. And I thank you for participating in the service today. It always, again, gives me great delight to see you stand up and express yes. yourself. Being, being willing to become a spectacle. You know? then, that, that's always good. Yes. And when you can stand up before people and, and say what's on your heart. Yes. Yes. That, that seems to be a, a, a trying time for some people. Some yes. people, you know, just, just can't stand up and speak in public. They feel that all of the eyes that are on them are oh. touching them and pushing them. Yes. But that that's something that you'll just have to get over. Yes. Yes. It's something you'll have to get over. Because there may come a time when it may be you that have to deliver the message yes. or to encourage somebody yes, or just yes. speak to the people about what's going on yes. and if you're the only one in the building with faith then you have the only true word in the house so why mm -hmm. let some sinner give up get up and spout a bunch of nonsense when you can get up and, and give some oh, words yeah. of encouragement mm -hmm. some words of strength yes. words that means oh. life and death yes. Come on. Yes. 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 so oh, yeah. Just work on it. Look in the mirror and talk sometimes. Yes, just in case. Amen. You know. Amen. You'll be all right. <laughs> and then just when you're up talking, look out there and see your best friend's face and everybody's face that you Ooh. see. 
Because you know your best friend can't get you to shut up. <laughs> so, so just think of you speaking to your best friend. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So again, the day is the third Sunday of the month, and we always answer questions on the third Sunday of the month. And we have a question today that, that I learned something from. And so we will get into the service. And the question is, Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Did Jesus tell it as a parable or as a true story? So the question is, did Jesus tell the story in Luke 16, 19 through 31, tell it as a true story, or did he tell it as a parable? Now, we know that a parable is a story that's fictitious, that it's a, it's a fictional story, but it always brings out a true point. That is the purpose of a parable. It is a fictional story that gives you a true point in the end. And throughout my Bible studying career, I was under the impression, based upon the things that I've read, that Luke 16, 19 to 31 was a true story. But because of the question, and I checked all sources and all thoughts, it is said to have been a parable, and the only parable in the Bible where a person's name is used. Generally, parables doesn't give names. It just says a certain person went to a certain place and two people done this and that and the other. And this one says a certain rich man and a, and a beggar named Lazarus. They use a, a, the Lazarus name. So it says that this is a parable that Jesus uses a name in. But it doesn't matter in this case whether this is a parable or a true story the ending point is the same. You get the true story at the end. So it says that the reader, that the reader of the parable will end up with a factual incident, regardless of whether it is a story or a parable. So it didn't matter. So I guess that's why it was said. And then it was also said that because Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead, he used the name Lazarus to bring the people into a, a visual process to where they would see somebody who was dead and raised. So that's what I found out. So before I, I get into the definition on the story, I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 5 Matthew chapter 5 verses 29 and 30 it says and if your right eye offends you pluck it out and cast it from you for it is profitable it is better it is worth more for you that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. Right. Mm -hmm. Verse 30 says, and if your right hand offends you, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is profitable in for you that one of your members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Now with that being read and said, I would like to first of all caution you not to think evil or not to think rational or logical because Jesus is not advocating mutilation to the body. No. What he is doing in this incident is pointing out the dreadfulness of hell. Yes. It would be worth more to you to not have a hand or an eye right. than it would be to be in hell. Yes. Hell is the worst thing that can happen to you. Yes. So yes. don't let, well, you know, 
and you can cut your hand off and not steal, or you can pluck your eye out and not see and be lustful. Because your eye and your hand, on their own validity, cannot change your heart. So if you have a heart for sin, and you pluck your eye out, you're still going to have a heart for sin. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. And if you're an evil person and you cut your hand off, you're still going to be an evil person. You see, because the heart is where the trouble lies. So he's saying to us to cleanse ourselves from the inside. Yeah. It is worth more yes. to be whole yes. in spirit than to have all of our members. So not, not by any means is he saying that we should disfigure ourselves or maim ourselves or mutilate our bodies so that we can be holy and go to heaven. It's not about the members. It's about the heart. Right. Okay, so that, right. just thought I'd throw that out. And then I want to read from uh, Matthew 25, 40, 2541. Where it says, then shall he, Jesus, say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So he said to the people on the left who has not been the good people, to get away from me because you're cursed and he's going to cast you into the fire with the devil and his angels. Now this one is very important to us because it says in, in God's own words that the everlasting fire, it says, prepared for the devil and his angels. So you have to understand that being a human being, God never intended for any of us to go to hell. He does not want any of us to go to hell. No. That's why he prepared the fire for the devil and his angels, yes. not for the people. Mm -hmm. right. But we have to also understand that he prepared us or created us in his image and in his likeness so that we would be like him. Yes. He made us like him. And being like him, we have the ability and the opportunity to choose the direction in which we travel. Mm -hmm. So if we choose to stay like him, then we don't have to worry about this everlasting fire. Yes. Amen. If we choose to be like the devil, then we got a problem. Come on. Because it says that the fire was prepared for the devil and his angel. So whoever we serve, that's who we get to stay with. Amen. And if we're serving the devil, then we can't be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So we have to understand that. Hell is a place, a true place. It was never made for you, but it is there, a place. And the Bible speaks about it over and over again. Heaven and hell is talked about a lot in the Bible. Amen. So it is a true place. So never come to the conclusion that there is no hell. Amen. Oh, yeah. it, there is. Yes. And that is what we are going to study today and talk about because that was the question. Did Jesus tell the parable? of Luke 16, 19 to 31 as a parable or as a true story. Now this is, this is the story. It says in Luke 16, 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Yeah. I'm gonna stop there and come. There was a rich man 
It says, who was dressed in purple and fared sumptuously every day. <laughs> so we take what he is dressed in signifies his worth. Purple was a color of royalty. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kings, queens, princes, people of means wore purple. Yes. Common folk could not afford anything purple. Nope. It was that expensive. So that, therefore, the, the, the rulers wore the purple to stand above everybody else. And that's what this man was. But it doesn't say that he was uh, part of any royalty or any courts or anything. But we understand that there are men who make kings. Yes. So he must have been a very powerful, powerful man with wealth. So he fared sumptuously, he ate good, he lived good, he rode good. Everything about this man was high dollar and high echelon. But then there was the beggar who was at the lowest end of the totem pole. And you understand what God has given us here. He's given us the very highest and the very lowest. Yeah. Because the beggar is not only broke and beggarly, He's full of sores. He's also diseased. He's yes. sick. Yes. And he's laid at the day yes. at the rich man's gate, which says that there must be a lot of coming and going at the rich man's place because yes. he, the beggar is laying there so that he can beg. Yes. Of course, that's his job. He's a beggar. And he's laid at the gate. And the dogs come and says that he licks his sores, which puts him a little bit lower than what you would think right. just being a beggar right. and being sick because the dogs were the worst thing in the world in this day. And when they said, referred to a dog, it meant that you were filthy and nasty because dogs ate garbage and ate yes. dead animals. Yes. And they're, so dogs were scavengers and they were the lowest thing. So if a dog was licking his sores, they assumed that this guy was not only ritually dirty, he was physically dirty because he was getting the germs and infections yes. from the dogs that would lick his sores. So you see, he, he, he's explaining Lazarus in a way that people would never want to be like Lazarus. And nobody would never want to be around Lazarus. So he was laid at the man's gate every day and he would like to have had the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. That would have been a banquet for him. But he got none. In verse 22 it says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Lazarus died, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died, and he was buried. A distinction between the two characters of the man. The beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. And we know that must have been a good place. Yes, amen. Because Abraham was there. Yes. And the angels came and carried him there. Praise the Lord. Yes. The, the, the rich man died and he was just dragged off and threw in a hole and they threw dirt on him. <laughs> so the contrast is the same as the rich man being sumptuously fed every day and the beggar being laid at the gate with the dogs licking his sores. High end, low end. That's true. They both died. The beggar was carried by the angels yeah. into Abraham's bosom. Yeah. The rich man was buried. Yeah. And in hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham 
said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all of this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from here to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from where you are. So it says here that the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell and saw afar off Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and he cried out to send Lazarus so that he can dip his finger in the water, the tip of his finger, not much, the tip of his finger in the water and touch my tongue to cool it off because I'm being tormented in these flames. Yes, Lord. The rich man is still acting rich. Yes. yes. He didn't say, can I come over there and get a drink? Yes. He said, send that, send that servant over here yes. and let him dip, dip his face. So you see, his, his heart has not changed. He is still the rich man, still dictating, still running things. But he's in hell, in torment. <laughs> and he said, to send Lazarus, that he might dip his finger. And what is so crucial about these statements and about this vision, that he says that in hell, he lifted up his eyes. So the rich man in hell had eyes. And he saw yeah. Lazarus laying in Abraham's bosom. Abraham had a bosom. Yes, amen. And he wanted him to dip his finger, Lazarus' finger, in some water. So Lazarus had a finger or a hand. <laughs> and he wanted him to dip it on his tongue so it could cool him off. He had a tongue. My emphasis on the body parts is to familiarize us with what we have. We are whole in having heads our souls and limbs. Mm -hmm. So it is pointing out here that in heaven Lazarus and Abraham had a body. Mm -hmm. In hell he had a body. So what I'm saying is we don't know yet the word says what we will be but we know that when Jesus comes we will look like him and it says that if they still had all of these things, then they still had familiar, a familiar operation going on. They had, they had familiarity. They had tongues. They, they had eyes. They must have had mouths for the tongue to be in, right? <laughs> so that that and the eyes. So they had to have heads and, and limbs. So you see, we are going to be whole. Wherever we are, we're going to be whole. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this so that we will understand our position. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we leave here, it says we don't know what we will be, but we will be like him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about the body. It talks about there are many kinds of flesh. There is flesh that men have, but there is flesh that animals have that's different from the flesh that the man has. Then there are fish that have flesh different from an animal's flesh and a man's flesh. And then there are fowls or chickens and birds who have a flesh that's different from them. We all have a, a different flesh as God has chosen. And he says that you can take a seed and throw it in the ground and you're not going to get that seed back, but you will get what that seed bears. It will not look like the seed you threw in the ground, but it will look like what it produces as God's will. So you see, when we die, we are going to yes. change, yes. but we're still going to be familiar with ourselves. Yes. It's giving us a picture that there is a hell to shun yes. and a heaven yes. to oh, gain, God. and we're going to be familiar when we get there. Yes. We're not just going to be blobs or something laying over <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> we will be whole. 
And it says that, that the rich man raised his eyes up and he saw Lazarus over there. And he asked him to send him over there. And Abraham said that we're over here and we can't come over there. That's right. And those who are over there with you can't come over here. Which gives us another view yeah. of our eternal existence. It's once we get where we're going. Yes, Lord. There is no escape. You can't get out. So when you end up, or if you choose to end up in hell, you can't get out. It's not a summer vacation. Well, I went to hell, and it was so hot over there, and there was so much torment and so much evilness going on, I decided that I'd take a vacation. I want to come over to heaven now. It don't work. There is only two options in the eternity. That place of torment and that place of comfort in Abraham's books. Yeah. And we get to choose. That's the beauty of the whole thing. We get to choose. Hallelujah. You see, God in his infinite wisdom gave us abil the ability to choose. Made us like him. Yes. He made us like him for a purpose. He made us like him so that we could commune and, and, and fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. That was his purpose. He came down in the middle of the evening and walked through the garden with Adam. Mm -hmm. That was his, his sole thing. He would come down in the cool of the evening and walk through the garden with Adam. And him and Adam would commune with one another. Mm -hmm. That was his purpose for creating us in his image and in his likeness. He had a reason so that we would be a companion with him. But if we choose not to associate with him, then there is only one other option. You see, we don't have the gray area to where we can just, well, I, instead of hanging out with the um, Eskimos today, I think I'm going to go hang out with the Italians. And then when I get tired of the Italians, I'm going to go over and hang out with the Africans. And then when I get sick of the Africans, I'm going to go hang out with the Indians. You know, you, we, we have the ability to do that on earth. But it says that in the end, there's only the good and the bad. Amen. There's that, not that gray area. So we have to choose one or the other. And God made us to be his companions. But when we reject him, then there's only one other place we can go. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were reading in Matthew 25, 41. That those who are on the left, those hard headed ones. Yes, you see, because right. on the right were the sheep. Yes, come on. On the left were the goats. Yes. The sheep being followers, yes. the gentle guys. Yeah. On the left was a ghost, those hard-headed guys. Mm -hmm. You have to herd them, you have to catch yeah. them. Amen. Sheep just follow. Mm -hmm. We are the sheep. Yes. We get to choose which camp we want to be in. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And where we end up in the end times is our permanent location. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't get to choose and say, well, I'm tired of this and I'm going to go over there now. We, we have to stay where we are. He said, there's a great gulf fixed between us so that they which would come from here over there, we can't do it. And those who are on your side that want to come over here to us, they can't go. But watch what the, wise, the, the rich man says. Then the rich man said, well, I pray you, therefore, Father Abraham, that you would send him, Lazarus, still trying to send Lazarus places, trying to get Lazarus to work. Send him, Lazarus, to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said to the rich man, they have Moses and the prophets. They have this book, Moses and the prophets. Hallelujah. Let them hear them. And the rich man said, no, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And Father Abraham said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Have mercy, Lord. 
He has given us the instructions. He's given us the instructions. If we can't read the instructions and follow the instructions yes. the way he gave them, yes. then it doesn't matter what we see. Again, it is coming from the heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to make that decision. He is saying here that just because somebody show up from the dead, your brothers ain't going to pay them no attention, especially if they didn't pay Moses and the prophets no attention. And his his, we have to call that a prophetic statement yes. because that is exactly what has transpired. Yes. yes, yes. Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. Yes. And the people didn't oh, like yeah. him and didn't trust him and was thinking yes. of how to kill Lazarus again yes. because he was on the receiving end of a miracle that made a man that they didn't like yes. look good. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they tried to figure out how to kill Lazarus again. Yes. He had to stay home. And then Jesus himself died on the cross. And look at us. He died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And do we still, do we follow Moses and the, and the prophets? Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. But each and every one of us slip every now and then. So you see, it doesn't matter what they read or what they hear or what they see. It is what's in their heart. And this is what he is trying to get us to come to in this message here. That there is a hell to shun yes. and a heaven to gain. Uh -huh. But it depends on us. Yes. Amen. We can go either place. But we have to make the choice. Yes. Yes. And there is no time frame. If it takes you a hundred years to get it. Yes. Just so long as you got it. When you close your eyes yes. on this side Thank you, of paradise, yes. Praise yes. The Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. you can get it within an instant or you can get it over a period of years. Yes. But you must get it. Yes. You must get it. Yes. And thus, to the young people, you don't have time to wait. If the opportunity has presented itself or is presenting itself, it is time to grab hold to it while it's present. Yes. Yes. It is not cool or it is not fashionable to wait. Well, I'm going to receive God when I get 45. Because <laughs> from now to then, boy, I got a lot of stuff that I want to get done. Now, Get the stuff that you need to get done within the confines of God's word. Yes. <laughs> if you operate in God's word, when you get to 45, you will be so much better yes. than yes. waiting till you're 45 and change. And then you have that unforeseen tragedy to where you don't make it to 45. Have mercy, Lord. Yes. What happens then? When you lift your eyes in hell and see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, it's too late to think about getting over there. Amen. And Lazarus is not coming over to dip his finger in the water to cool your tongue. It is torment, torment, torment. If we have the opportunity to live in heaven running those streets of gold and, and eating at the banquet table with the Hallelujah. Lord, floating around, playing our harps and living the life of Riley in heaven to eternity, then those on the other side has to fight that fire eternity. It never changes. That's what the word says, that it never changes. That the fire burns forever. But we like to think on the good side. Oh yeah, if I do right and get to heaven, I can live eternity. I can live through eternity. Everything will be good. Everything is peaches and cream. And hell, oh don't worry about hell. Hell ain't nothing. Ain't no hell. And anyway, if you get in hell, God will get you out. No, no, no. no. 
But this is the mentality that we, we come across because people read mm -hmm. these funny books. Mm -hmm. And they get these ideas nice. that everything good is really good, but everything bad, well, no, that ain't really that. And, and if it was, it won't do that. And God loves everybody so much that he's not going to let them burn in hell forever. God would never do that. You're absolutely right. God would never allow you to burn in hell yeah. forever. Yeah. But he won't stop you from doing what you want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Come on. You see, he, he does everything to keep you out when he came and died on the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That was to keep you out. Yes. And then he rose to the throne of grace and he sits at the right hand of God yes. interceding for you daily mm -hmm. yes. so that you don't have to go. And all of the things that he is doing to keep you out and you are rejecting, that he's not going to stop you. He loves you dearly, but he loves you enough to let you be you. Yes, amen. It is the same effect with us in parenting. We love our kids so much that we will do anything to keep them from hurt, harm, or danger. And thus, we give them instructions. We give them rules. But they, being human, like us, they say, well, mama just don't want me to have no fun. <laughs> mama just don't want me to do nothing. <laughs> and my boys used to tell me, oh, dad, yeah. Everybody gets to do everything but us. Well, that's just the way it is. Because I'm sure if their parents knew, they wouldn't be getting to do it either. But I found out about you doing it, so I'm saying don't do it. And if you do do it, then heaven won't hold you. But anyway. We tell our kids not to do things, not to keep them from enjoying life, and having fun, but we tell them not to do things so that their lives will be better and they can enjoy life and have fun. Mm -hmm. And this is where we come to the point of disobedient. We be disobedient to our parents, proving that we can't be trusted with anybody because if we will go against or violate the rules of the person who loves us the most, what about everybody else? They don't even stand a chance with you. So consequently, you will end up in jail, maybe, or getting beat up by a lot of strange people because you won't comply. You won't follow instructions or the rules. And my point here is that our teenagers need to understand both sides of the spectrum. They need to understand the love that we have for them. And when we tell them something, it is because of the love. It's not because you made me so mad doing what you did. No, I'm screaming at you. I'm yelling at you because you have broke the trust. You have violated the standards. You've done something that you shouldn't do. And I want you to understand that it affects me because it makes me fearful that you're going to do something that's going to cause you damage that I can't correct. Right. The same point that Jesus is saying, we do things that he can't correct. When we end up going to hell, he can't correct that. Because we violated his rules. And if his rule says not to, and we do it anyway, then he can't be God if he comes back and changes it. Well, because you are my son and I love you, I'm going to let you get away with this. If he does that, then he's no longer God. Because if he let one person get away with something, God, being no respect to a person, he has to let somebody else get away with something. And then he has to let somebody else get away with something because he let these two get away. And then pretty soon, there is no more rules. So the rules has to be the rules, and there has to be consequences or circumstances or results. However you want to choose the results, circumstances, or consequences. But something has to happen because 
of what took place. This is why there's a hell. The devil and his angels are against God. And they have to be put away in a place that is separated from God. And that place that they have to be separated from God too happens to be hell. And if you're on that team, that's where you have to go because there's no other place. There's only two. And my plea and my purpose is to say to you today is to choose wisely. Choose to walk with God. Choose to follow the rule. Choose to operate within the confines of the standards that God has set forth. And you will be a lot better off. Amen. Yes, amen. Everything that he does is for our benefit mm -hmm. and for our good. Yes, amen. Everything our parents did was for our benefit and our good. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see it though. We didn't see it till we got to be adults. Because I know I, I swear it. That people are out to get me, trying to kill me all the time. Just because I get a little spanking for something I did wrong. I just didn't understand why, because I done this, I should be punished. After all, I was the only boy around. I should be being taught how to be a man, not being beat up all the time. Right. But the rules have to be enforced to make the whole program work. Amen. And when we violate the rule, then there has to be consequences, results, or circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to just go with it. There was a, a, a movie, TV show, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. <laughs> so if you don't want the punishment, don't do the crime. Stay in the confines of that. But hell, it's a true place. And hell is a place that we don't want anything to do with. And thus, God intercedes for us daily. Mm -hmm. Amen. So come to realize that God is your best ally and friend. Amen. Come to realize that your parents is your best ally and friend. That is the only person that's going to be there. God and your parents. When the chips are down. When everybody else is looking at you saying, oh, that poor guy, he's done for it now. Your parents are going to be there trying to figure out how to undo what you've done. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to be there rooting and waiting for you to say, come on, come on, just say I'm sorry. Come on, confess your sins. I'm faithful and just to forgive you of that. Come on, just say it. Come on, you know what to do. Say it, say it. He's rooting for you to confess your sins so that he can forgive you so that you don't have to end up in that place. That's what you got going for you, being a child of God. Amen? And what I, what I submit to you this, this morning is read Luke 16, 19 through 31 and get a visual, get a picture again because if you understand what he's saying and then go through a few other scriptures in there because hell is talked about throughout the Bible. Yes, amen. Hell is talked about, and it's never talked about in a good light. Amen. There's always something terrible going on in hell. You don't want to end up there. You don't want to end up there. And when you fully grasp the severity of it, you don't want anybody to end up there. Mm -hmm. Thus, you will begin to speak the word of God. You will begin to try to tell other people Amen. about Jesus so that they don't have to go there. Because it's not a pleasant place. And Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your thank word. You, we thank you, Father, for this time of fellowship and togetherness. And as we approach this Thanksgiving week, Father, we just give you thanks for, for all that you are and for all that you do. We thank you, Father, for the things that we forgot about from years ago. Yes. We thank you, Father, for forgiving us, for not thanking you every day. We ask, Father, for your guidance and your blessing to bring those things that are, that are a desire of our hearts 
to fruition, Father. Help us to have a good day on Thanksgiving. Bring our families together, Father. Touch those families who are torn and broken, Father. The, the daughter who hasn't spoken to the brother. The father who hasn't spoken to his son. The brother who's mad at his sister. The sister who has not spoken to the brother. The uncle who's been estranged, Father. The aunt who's been misbring the people together, Father. And, and, and fill those families with joy. And we just thank you, Father, again, that you are our Father and that you care about every facet of our lives. We know, Father, that you are a forgiving God and that your mercies are new each and every day. Mm -hmm. Father, we cry out for those mercies. Yes, Please forgive God. us, Father, and, and to give us mercy each day. Yes. We thank you again for this time of fellowship and togetherness. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, to bless those who couldn't be here today. Heal those who are ill or injured, Father, and give those traveling mercies who are on the road. We lift this day in our lives up to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.